If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Universal gives its own logo 24 seconds of screen time, despite knowing several other production logos were waiting in line behind it, and stretching our total opening logo time to a whopping 55 seconds. Hey Jeremy, I got a studio logo for you. There has been a war between orcs and humans for as long as can be remembered. Or as long as it's been since Tolkien created the orcs were blatantly stealing for this game movie. And labeling this as blatantly stealing is kind of weird, considering Tolkien is responsible for a lot of tropes and lore that have been adapted in modern and postmodern fantasy. You mean like socialism? No, not that postmodern fantasy. But there was once a time when we did not even know who our enemy was. Wait, you just said you've been fighting with humans as long as you can remember. So how do you remember the time before that when you didn't even know your enemy? Probably because he's talking about the real reason they're fighting humanity, i.e. the dark magic known as Fell and the guardian that opened the gate between their two worlds, you goof. But in the beginning, how could we have known? Known what? You've given me three statements so far. Two about knowing and one about wondering how you could have known and already I think I see the problem with this movie. He quite literally said what they didn't know in the scene you just sinned. Seriously, what the f is funny about this to people? He's just pretending he didn't hear what he just heard and sinned. This asshole has a couple of tusk rings, which means the real antagonist here is the scourge of tooth decay. Animals, such as dogs, have a very low rate of tooth decay because they generally subsist on meat. Tooth decay is caused by certain bacteria that metabolize sugar, so the more meat and less fruit they consume, the healthier their teeth will be in general. Guess what orcs normally eat? Pregnant wife makes me imagine this couple's gross, gross orc sex, which probably involved the Fifty Shades of Warcraft sex manual. That's racist. So many clans in one place, Ogre. Laughing Skull, Blackrock. Expositional time wasting clan naming. Oh, trust me. Only one of you is wasting our time right now. Question Why must the portal be 200 feet high in order to walk an army of men no taller than 8 or 9 or maybe 10 feet? Maybe he wouldn't need to wipe out so many races if he made these things more practical. Well, since you asked, the portals are this big so that large creatures can fit, like the Netherwings. What are Netherwings, you ask? Well, this movie is based on a video game, and that portal exists in the game, as do those dragons I named. This movie assumed it was going to get a sequel, and as this is an origin story for Thrall and the orc-human conflict, they didn't show the large entities that would fit in that portal just yet. The real sin is this movie thought it was getting a sequel. The fuel for my magic is life. Any life? Does it have to be terrified, anthropomorphic life? Why not just breed a few million orc mice specifically for portal purposes? Not that I condone wanton mouse murder, just seems like it'd be a lot easier. Or plants, even. The movie explicitly states they have consumed the plant life of their homeworld. That's literally why they're leaving. And yes, they could breed mice for that purpose, but they would need hella mice, and they have a readily available source already. If you think about it, they're just like us. The enemy is weak. When we arrive, we will take them as fuel. Is this Warcraft or a gritty reboot of Monsters, Inc.? Or was Monsters, Inc. a sanitized Warcraft? You know, because Warcraft is nearly a decade older? You just said, is the rotary phone a less complex iPhone? <laughs> oh, that was all just space travel, I guess. It's a portal, Jeremy. How did you think they were traveling? By boat? Main character adult male orc gets in trouble for bringing his pregnant wife on a raid, which is how the movie chooses to show me it has rules or something, but mostly just a way to give our main characters obstacles and antagonists. If this guy knew this rule last night, then give me some scene explaining why he's gonna break the rules to bring her along anyway. But no, last night you gave us hilarious pillow talk about child naming and fat bellies. I'm curious, but does a movie have to explain everything in the first couple minutes? Because if you watch the film, they explained that some people were left behind and that this was a band of warriors meant to colonize the new land. Since her pregnancy was in the final stages, she decided to tag along so that their baby would know his father. I mean, he is a warrior and does die in this thing. 
Yep, this is a title screen, which means you've learned all you need to know about these creatures in the last nine minutes, which is, in point of fact, hilariously untrue. Irony. In case you confused it for someplace real and not ripped off from Lord of the Rings. Okay, so he's just going to do the whole, this is not like Lord of the Rings thing this entire video, and I'm just going to skip all that and give him 20 cents for the trouble. It's good to see the dwarves thriving in the Lonely Mountain again after cleaning up what must have been catastrophic piles of small I know what I just said, but this is, this is like Lord of the Rings. They're different but equally annoying. Also, even though you're giving us town names each time we see a new one, you're still not giving me any relative distance, which would greatly help me understand if any of these places are friend or foe. A textbook example of a gish gallop. What the hell does the distance have to do with whether someone is friend or foe? Hello? American Civil War? Germany and Poland? Ukraine and Russia? I know I'm making this video eight years in the future, but from your perspective, Russia just annexed Crimea two years ago. You just say words. I've sensed something. Dark forces, when it's strong, it almost has a smell. Fart magic. Fart humor. Tread carefully, you talk to your queen. You are my sister first. These people look nothing alike. And yes, they could be step-siblings, but I feel the way this movie is written, someone would say, yes, I am your sister first, but the blood of my father is different from yours. Not true, as they could be half-siblings, where they share the same father, but their mothers could be different. That way, they'd be blood-related and she could still be black. Discount Buckbeak. Excuse me, that's a griffin. That creature existed in mythology centuries before JK was even born. Next thing you're going to tell me is she invented wizards. City manufactured by Rivendell Industries, a subsidiary of Tolco. Speak English! It's good to see you, Lothar. We need your guidance, Medivh. It sounds like this movie is about to get Medivh on our asses. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that is hiding in a bowl of rice in Indochina. Also, aw oh man, they dragged Ben Foster into this sh This is... This is exactly his level of movie. After getting thrown around the library and falling from a decent height, this kid remains virtually unscathed. Jeremy points out things on the screen, cliche. A magic unlike any other. It feeds on life itself. It pollutes the user, twisting everything it touches. It promises great power, but it exacts a terrible price. Cadgar made a big deal about how the Guardian needed to explain what this power was, but now that he has, I wonder why that asshole Cadgar couldn't have explained it. I mean, sure, they had to visit this guy, just not to explain this is what I'm saying. But isn't that why they visited the Guardian? Because he was far more experienced with his magic and could explain it properly? I mean, sure, it sounds simplistic when he explains it, but that's because he is the expert. Don't complex scientific principles sound simple when explained by Kurtzgazat? Also, you know, just once I'd like to see great power cause absolutely no moral or physical problems. But then it wouldn't be great power, would it? I mean, imagine a guy with the powers of Superman, but he did absolutely nothing with them. Wouldn't you say it's his moral obligation to stop an extinction-level meteor from destroying the Earth? That's a moral argument, especially because he would survive the destruction of Earth. Come on, man, didn't Spider-Man teach you anything? You have power. And with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Horse strangling. Horse throwing. Also, only CGI horses were harmed in the making of this film. Pointing out things on the screen cliche, and it's doubly annoying because this is the film showing you the abilities of the orcs. I mean, you picked up a fucking horse and tossed it like it was a beanie baby. Confusing battle cliche ex machina. Misusing deus ex machina ex machina cliche. Instead of just clubbing this guy to death, this dude decides to show his amazing strength by throwing him across the forest, which is decidedly less deadly. That horse disagrees. <laughs> orc helm scream. I get the portmanteau, but that was a human that was screaming there, not an orc. This kind of magic makes me wonder why the orcs are even still around to battle the humans at all. I mean, Jesus, that's Ark of the Covenant level magic. I know you're developmentally challenged, but come on, man. This is obviously the beginning of the orc-human conflict. The Guardian is only now joining the fight, and it was shown that this takes a bit of time to set up and execute, and it only works against the green ones. I'm wondering why Goldan brought Paula Patton on this journey, other than the fact that she's Paula Patton. True, she's smart and fierce, but she's a worthless prisoner that impedes travel, and the only reason I can think of to bring her is so that she can help the humans out later. She was brought because she's a translator. They showed this at the beginning of the film, and they later explained she learned the human language from the orc prisoners. Serious question, do you think Chris would notice if I stopped watching this and just made up the rest of my sins? Because while I'm not going to do that, I bet I could, and he wouldn't notice. That's how stupid this movie is. Don't you mean that's how stupid the other half of Cinema Sins is? You know, something we've known for a long time now? Have you a name? Garona. She calls herself Garona. Okay, cool, but why do you answer the ruler on her behalf with a smile? It's almost like she didn't answer him and you manipulated the scene to look like he quickly answered for her. Have you a name? Again, have you a name? Corona. She calls herself Corona. 
Also, Discount Gamora is named Garona, because the subtlest differences in copycat movies are the best. Except Garona existed in Warcraft lore ten years before the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Remember, this is an adaptation, Normie. But how did you learn our language? Or take prisoner for the gate. I learned from them. So the prisoners taught you every word of English in the short time you've been in this world? Considering how broken her English is, that's an obvious no. But I'm giving you an extra sin here because you just admitted they'd been here for a short time, but earlier you pretended to not know that earlier skirmish was one of the first orc human battles. You have allowed the small teeth to kill your warriors. You thought this problem ended long ago, but people are still tooth racist. It sounds more like a descriptor to me. I mean, you call people black and white, which are extremely poor descriptors because no humans are literally black or white. At least theirs makes sense. He challenges you already. Or he's just a baby that makes baby sounds. Or, or, she knows more about her race than you do. Shit, dude, you barely know anything about ours. Wherever Goldan works his magic. The land dies. Duratan is the only orc with the wherewithal to notice that Goldan's magic kills the life that surrounds it, even though it's extremely clear that is how it draws its power. I don't think he's the only orc that noticed. He's one of the few that actually cares. But let's dispense with the it's extremely clear nonsense. Earlier, you specifically asked why didn't they breed mice and plant trees to harvest energy for the fell, dude. You're just now noticing this too. The ancient equivalent of texting while driving. Factually untrue, because his car is sentient and can drive without his input. <laughs> so Tesla? A great gate. Nothing I'm looking at even looks like a gate, let alone a great gate. It mostly looks like Six Flags and Costner's The Postman Apocalypse. Portal and gate are synonyms here. You know, like Stargate SG-1. Did you not see the other portal earlier, refer to it as a portal, and even asked why that portal was so large? Why must the portal be 200 feet high in order to walk an army of men no taller than 8 or 9 or maybe 10 feet? This motherfucker is crazy. To the north, there is a black rock that touches the sky. It's okay. You can say mountain. You know all the other words. Hey, Jeremy, he's fictional and can't hear you. You know that, right? Sounds like a trap. It is not. Could be. Akbar, I mean Lothar, is right. Yet there are no other objections to this plan. Nor does the king build in precautions to their approach, even with the strong possibility that this is a trap. First of all, he's only right by technicality. The original plan was not a trap. Dorotan was betrayed, and a trap was laid unbeknownst to him. And second, they did build in precautions. That's why the Guardian was there, and that's why they met with armor and weapons. Like, what other precautions could they have taken? This shot with the volcano in the background? Yeah. Some unnecessary Zack Snyder bullshit right there. You saw some pretentious slow motion Jesus imagery in a Batman that's killing random thugs back there? Because I missed all that. Why did you say that? He says the orcs or solves everything. Even herpes? Well, if you kill everyone with herpes. Roughly too many minutes after the battle started, this guy's powers kick in. Or the movie is showing you why your earlier suggestion holds no water. His abilities take time, effort, and stamina, and this is why he can't kill all orcs with these abilities. Hold on, son. Dad. <laughs> what? And why the f can this guy put his hand through this thing? I don't know, and it was definitely ridiculous, but not quite as ridiculous as that laugh. Do not make me take more innocent lives, young chieftain. Isn't their entire culture built around taking innocent lives? They literally suck the souls out of people to travel to a new world so they could murder everyone there too. You are encroaching upon moral relativism. In other words, when he says innocent, he means from his perspective. To him, orcs are morally correct in their crusade and therefore they are innocent and those they kill are not. You know, religion. If love is what you need, you must be willing to travel to the ends of the world to find it. That, I'll just try Tinder. Yeah, that's what he said, the end of the world. Yep, they just stole the orc music from Lord of the Rings, just if you're keeping score at home for all the theft going on. Another instance of claiming this is like Lord of the Rings after explicitly sending the movie for not being like the Lord of the Rings. Wait for me. I guess I'll just accept that this bird understands English, if only in the interest of saving time. Well, why not? Dogs understand human commands, and they're not mythological creatures in fantasy fiction. How dare you return here! You'd think there would be a guard or an obstacle or two that would keep him from just running into the council's area, but you'd be wrong. Actually, I would think the fact that this is a floating f***ing sky castle means it has a pretty good natural obstacle. That, and the fact that it's full of extremely powerful wizards who could disintegrate you upon entry. Cadgar decides to trust this woman, even though she has a hint of green on her forehead, and this movie has done a pretty solid job teaching me what Ryan Reynolds already knows. Green glowing is bad. Yes, but the fact that she dies indicates that her warnings about the fell can be trusted. 
Somehow, some way, this orc chick is allowed to visit this dude in his cell. I'd elaborate further, but I'm so f***ing over this movie, I'm trying to save time and be concise. This would never happen. Why are you so sure you're right, even when they explicitly had a scene of the reverse happening? Why would she not be allowed to visit him? She's in the same position he was in earlier in the movie. What are you talking about? It only works on the simple-minded. Just like some Jedi mind tricks. Man, this movie rips off all the movies, doesn't it? So are you arguing that adaptations shouldn't be like the things they are adapting? Because this spell is literally from the game, meaning the movie is not ripping off Star Wars, but simply following its own universe. You can make the argument that the games are ripping off Star Wars, but that's a different conversation and would be a sin for the games, not the film adaptation. Where's my teeth? We've got a demon to kill. Totally not answering the question for drama's sake. I mean, he is answering the question and taking him to the demon, so. Wait, she's not. Is this movie really going to- Holy sh! we've got a blatant Moses ripoff here, people. You mean Sargon of Akkad. The story of Moses' birth is directly ripped off from Sargon. This is what I keep telling the Christians that cry in my comment section. All these Judeo-Christian myths are stolen from other, older legends and myths. Wait until they hear about how Noah's Ark is a ripoff of Gilgamesh's flood story. And here we go. Oh yeah, the magical creature made of clay that isn't technically alive but can still battle is useless without its head. That makes perfect sense. Well, yeah, it's a humanoid. This means it would have the same limitations that comes with the body plan. If they gave it a head with eyes, removing that head would mean it can't navigate. Otherwise, what the hell was the point of giving it a head? Even though there appear to still be a large number of orcs, the humans are still inexplicably winning this fight. And by winning, Jeremy means losing pretty badly but barely holding a small defensive position. Now the orcs are winning again? Does orc strength rely on who has control of the portal, or is it just a moral thing? And by winning again, Jeremy means winning still and not having been losing at all. Well, killing me will make you a hero. Bring peace between orcs and humans. How? Just because she kills you and gets to survive because of it? How in the world is she supposed to rise to power to bring harmony between orcs and humans? And why would humans believe your story for that matter? It's not like you told everyone before the battle, hey, if she kills me, don't be mad at her for it. It means I told her to do that. They literally don't. That's explicitly the ending of the movie, where Lothar does believe she betrayed them and prepares for war against the orcs in a sequel we're never going to get. Now Lothar will single-handedly defeat the orc army. And by single-handedly defeat the orc army, Jeremy means kill a few orcs with the help of his griffin that's doing most of the actual killing. Yep, he went for the nuts. The dirty fighting move in any time period, fictional or otherwise. But on the plus side, it brings us much closer to this thing ending. Jeremy sends something he likes, cliche. Movie is open-ended, and unfortunately this movie made decent money overseas, which means we might have another one of these f***ing things. Damn you, foreign box office! Hi, future Birdman here. No, not that future Birdman. Yeah, that didn't happen. At best, they're talking about a reboot, and given the performance of movies these days, I doubt even that gets off the ground. You know, because it might have too many black people in it, and then it would be too CRT to make money. I mean, woke. I mean DEI. I mean Nick. Well, it's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys. Let's or... do this. Leroy Jenkins. Oh my God, he just ran in.